Hey there, how's it going? Um, so in this video, we are going to perform checkpoint operation in Spark. So what is checkpoint really? So in Spark, you have a like lazy evaluation like each data frame or RDD depends on other uh, data frame. So and it's great lineage. Like if you go to your Spark UI, you can see. Uh, the dark visualization of each uh, uh, data frame dependencies so one depends on another so it's great basically a uh, lineage of um, um, let's say uh, data frame so in when you use car, uh, checkpoint it's break, basically break the lineage and uh, so what it does is basically uh, store your data frame to a, a storage it can be memory so that like, if you use local checkpoint it's going to store the uh, RDD or data frame to the uh, memory but if you use a reliable checkpoint it's going to store it in disk so it can be HDFS or any other uh, distributed file system maybe as well uh, data lake what what I'm going to do in this video is basically show you how to uh, checkpoint your data frame. So, um, if you have the uh, data frame one and you have another data frame which depend on data frame one, you can checkpoint this data frame, and uh, you uh, using the checkpoint data frame, you can write another. Um, you can perform another transformation which. Uh, um, so basically this one this first two on the left side will depend on the uh, your checkpoint data frame and the ones on the right will also depend on your checkpoint data frame so let's just go into coding aspect of it so um, for example this is a data frame I've created by reading a, a file and uh, this person df1 is created and another the data frame person df1 person df2 which is dependent on person df1 you can see we are applying a, a transformation here on person df1 <laughs> so so from person df2 we are applying another transformation to get some column size uh, what i want to do is basically um, checkpoint person df2 here so to checkpoint, you have to basically uh, specify the checkpoint directory. I mean, if you're going to use the disk as your checkpoint location, so let's do that. So to do that, you have to say Spark session, basically Spark dot Spark context dot set checkpoint directory, and you can specify your checkpoint directory. I'm going to use the resources folder so that will be src then then the resources let me just check checkpoints so that will be the folder i'll be saying checkpoint the data frame so um here i'm going to define a new data frame called person df2 person df2 check point check point equal to so i'm going to say equal to um person df2 dot uh, check point so now instead of using person df2 here i'm going to use person df2 check point And then uh, wherever I use person df2, I will use the checkpoint. So basically, checkpoints uh, actually they um, enable a quicker computation of your um, I mean data. And if you are using Spark streaming, so in, in case some uh, the executor may fail, so it's basically fault tolerance. So you'll be able to. Uh, uh, you will not lose your data 
but if you're looking uh, using a local checkpoint because the a checkpoint is basically a local checkpoint is basically utilizing um, spark memory so um, that, that may not be the ideal case but it has a better performance so okay now we've uh, set our checkpoints let's run the application okay so uh, it's done so you can see here right we've uh, got our checkpoint created right so this uh, this folder is basically uh, going to contain two files one is the checksum file and this basically your uh, the data which is basically in some um, format i don't know so but anyway uh, this check uh, this um uh, data that you checkpoint here is going to be used here to uh, perform order transformation. Um, so, um, if I, I can't go to Spark UI now, okay, let me run it again. I want to uh, leave this part, uh, the Spark UI open. So, I'm going to use system.in dot with spark session the stop so let's run it again so let's go to the spark ui so um here let's add local host 4040 so we should get our spark ui here so if you go to stage so the last um I'm just going to see. Uh, so this is this is the la last uh, action we call, which is dot show as line fifty. So if we go to Spark UI and let see line fifty, so you can see this is the dark visualization. The dark visualization started at stage. Um, so I say stage ten. So it started at the checkpoint uh, uh, area. So it's actually uh, it breaks the limit, right? So like you can't when you read um, the CSV file, right? We uh, called uh, action here, action method, person df one dot show, and also here we call person df two dot show. But if you check the and that visualization right you can't see the dark for those uh, two actions but the dark start at the uh, point where you checkpoint the uh, data which is uh, at this point so it's actually break this one away so the data frame are checkpointed and you start using the uh, the data you store at the checkpoint location from this here from this uh, point on so this this call side is basically depends on the checkpoint data and this uh, headers also depend on the checkpoint data and passing uh, df theory depends on the checkpoint data so yeah that, that is basically what i want to show you thank you for watching don't forget to like hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment uh, have a lovely day and goodbye